Okay, yeah, we are here on uh, April 9th, 2018 for our North Logan City Library Board Meeting. We'll begin with uh, the March Minutes. The only comment I got back was I had spelled James's name, last name wrong. Oh, yep. Yeah, so correct. I will correct that. That was the only comment I heard back from anybody. So anybody else read it and see I anything? read it. Didn't see anything change. I wasn't here, but I read it. It looked good. Okay. Is everybody approved those minutes from March? I move we approve the minutes. I'm sorry. I'll yes. second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. And we do not have Lindsay here for our friends report. Oh, yes, we do. Lindsay is just walking in. You guys, the fire alarm Sorry, might go so off and it's really oh, loud. So if it goes off, um, Joseph's just working on the fire alarm. So okay, it's not really okay. loud. <laughs> she can, really you want to come out here? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to do the budget report first? Oh, you mean for my report? Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to report. Okay. We're kind of coasting right now. We're a okay. little bit dormant in between, um, like with authors and illustrators, and then also, um, like we get, we'll get busier for the summertime, just doing the book sales and things like that. But. We really, we're, we're probably going to copy you guys a little bit and do, a, like, just do a free Friends membership to, just to get as many people involved with the Friends as we can. Um, so, we're working on how that's going to look, but I think we're going to kind of piggyback off of you guys if we do the fine free trial period. Mm -hmm. So, okay. that's about all I have to report. Okay. I'm going to turn this down. <laughs> I was just thinking, who is singing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cheryl has our budget report, and I'm sure we'll be talking to Judy yeah. and Paul in this, too. Yeah. No. We can share. Is there enough for everyone, or should we share, Cheryl? Oh, that's funny. Okay, if you want to look down, uh, I've written up on these so that it would kind of be self-explanatory. <coughs> uh, my copy has highlighted on the utilities, that's the first one, and so I talked to the second page, I want you to go to the second page. Okay, so I talked to Scott this morning and asked him what this 84, 6, 84 62, 90, and 8154 was that came in in March that we were not used to having. And he told me that prior to, and I don't know when, uh, there was 20% charged utilities to the library for the utilities. It is now at 80% and, that, and that's the way it probably should be. For this building? For this building. Because the city really only uses 20%. For this part, yeah. So mm -hmm. it will be the so the amount figured then on there will put it for the year instead of we have a project we had a projected this year of fifteen thousand and it'll be about thirty seven thousand four hundred. Oh, okay. because it's about thirty five hundred a month for the yeah. utilities. 80%. And the city's been paying that in the past. So no, mm -hmm. it was only twenty percent. See, so it was down quite a bit. Yeah. But Scott said about 3,700. But when okay. I went back and for what the, the, you know added those together, it really is about 3,700, you know, for the year. Okay. So that's got to be increased. Uh, down on the 4,500, even though we don't know yet what the grant, what this new librarian will apply for grants. We need to put a figure in there so that we have something that goes in and out through the grant. You know, if you go up on the state grant, you'll see there was 6012 up on the income state grant, 2021-38706. 
in the income. Do you oh, see I see that? it. Mm -hmm. okay. Collection state grants. Okay. Oh, no. Now down here under special projects grants, we used 4,500 to date. Down, and I have that highlighted down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we need to put 6,000 for the next year. So there is a figure that we're thinking we will have grants coming in and grants going out. Now that we there is a collection state grant fifty six hundred that we uh, did put in. Right, it's still there. Yeah, it's up above and under we collections. We haven't spent that yet. Uh, we have a, the collection. So we have, but it hasn't gone through. We just purchased six thousand dollars worth. Of I don't that know the fifty six hundred. Maybe so where is be, this forty five hundred that we got? Yeah, collections. That we spent. Now, when you meant collections grant, what did you mean before? What does that? No, mean? I'm saying you, she she meant fifty six hundred. Right uh -huh. here we have yeah under state grant fifty six hundred, and down here under collection state grant we have the fifty six hundred. Okay, and then, but we have uh, But we here. have that 4500 grant that we've okay. spent. Yes, so that, if we So where did that there, come from? I, what I guess grant the question, was that? I, he applied for a $6,000 grant and got it. Adam did. Okay. Uh, not Adam, but whoever, I don't know. Are those the same, <laughs> are we talking about the same thing? Um... So, uh, if we could look in the in the ledger um, under what is under the six thirty two, I'm I'm guessing that's a misappropriation that should have gone to a different account. No, it isn't. We've moved it twice now. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I went up. Yeah. So, ba to so Scott basically, the uh, only the only grant I'm aware of that we get was the is okay. the Clef grant uh, that comes in that came in at six thousand. Uh -huh. and, but we just spent that last week, so I don't know where that 45. So then it must have been something that Adam did. So we did receive it, but it doesn't show that we received it as a grant. Oh, right, we're so talking I, about... I'm saying we didn't show it as revenue that we received that before spending it, unless it was... In last year's revenue and this year's expense. Oh. That's a okay. so. <laughs> yeah, so that, that 4500 looks like it was um, for the EBSCO, which was. Um, that's a magazine. Yeah, so I believe that's the. That's the magazine. The magazines. So that shouldn't have come out of the state grant money. That should have just come out of collections, I believe. And but then, look, it was corrected. See, it was okay. put in here. That's what she's saying. It was corrected from another account. So it was in one account, but then it got moved to another account. Okay. So I don't know. Okay, probably you better tell me exactly where it's supposed to go because I had stopped move it last week because they told me that look. that was the money that they came in with the grant. Well, there the it is. Mm -hmm. And then it went into this account. The magazines. The magazines were in 631, and then they went into 632. So you need it to be in their magazines. It needs to be in the collections. Uh, but it, does, it, does it need to go in that 631, the Thorns oh, Bank? Yeah, so, so the special projects and grants, it's, it's in there, but there was no budget passed for that, so there's no money... <clears throat> so should it go into collections? So it should just go up to the collections. I believe it should just go just up straight to collections. To collections. Expense collections. What, right. Four eight one. What, what grants okay, they told me last time. Only the one. one. We received a clef grant. Clef grant, which is a state grant from the state library. And so the state grant that came from from the library was not to pay for this commuter, computer right. 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 Yeah, no, the state the state grant that came in, we spent those funds on children's books and we did that order two weeks ago. It okay. just needs to be and expensed. So the, yeah, on we're that just starting grant. to get the invoices now. Okay. Um, but it was deposited up at the city um, into that account. And I think that's okay, the Okay, but six my to question 12. is this is a computer program, I was told. 
just Ed Stowe. Ed Stowe. That 4500 that's probably the website, um, the cost for our web hosting. Okay, that's what they had me move it into. Okay. Because I said that was what the grant was for. And, and I'm not sure what that grant, what, if Adam wrote a grant for that or if it was a grant from our previous year. I'm not, I'm not sure. So. Because we've been on, we've been using mm -hmm. them for additional time. It was my understanding that last year um, with the friends, he had them um, write a check for the initial cost of that. And then when he presented the budget, they increased our um, software, library software maintenance by $5,000 to accommodate that new, but it was a one-time $4,500 payment that the Friends covered last year is, is my understanding of what happened. And I don't know if that so. just didn't come out in time before, the, like it was supposed to come out of last fiscal year and it somehow got rolled over to this one. So, Cheryl, EBSCO is a software program and it's also where we get our magazines from, our periodicals, so there's two two big amounts that we have from EBSCO. <coughs> okay, it's well I'm gonna just depend on you guys to get it in the right place for the next year. Okay. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll get it in the right place. Okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, anyway, for this year, I'm not gonna be concerned about, I'm not gonna go up to Scott and have him change it again because you know, he, okay. they have explained, uh, Alan explained to me that, that uh, you know, if it's important that you want it to show in a certain account, we can move it the second time. Okay. But it's up to you what you want to do with it. Okay, so I guess we just need to sit down and figure out if that's the actual magazines or the... the software. The software. If it's the software, we want it in the future to come out of the library software maintenance and make okay. sure we accommodate okay. the budget for that. Okay. All right. Okay, those are the things that came in on this particular statement. Now, I think she gave you, uh, there's, as you notice, we should be at 75%, and we are down to 67, I mean, just about 61%. So you're under budget by 1459 this year. Okay, and that's um, on the bottom. Do you see that mm -hmm. there? Okay, now as far as that's concerned, uh, depends upon what comes in the rest of the year. So that basically takes care of what, you know, we wanted to touch on today. And as I said, I'll just wait for Judy to let me know. All right. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to turn it over to Judy and we're going to go through, because I we've sat down together <coughs> and we've gone in. So we don't have to go through a ton of this. No, please. we just need to let you know that this is due. This worksheet that you have right here with the yellow, orange, and green mm -hmm. is due to Alan on the 23rd. He will give it to the city council on the 26th, and then we will present it to the council at the city council meeting on the 2nd of May. And uh, we had one meeting about it, and this worksheet is um, what we're what we have to present, and it's changeable. And we can change and it. Like we're, we're that number meet changed. With Alan to, uh, yeah, we I have to meet with Alan. Mm -hmm. To us to meet with Alan, and we'll go over some of these. So if you want to look through it, I don't know. What do you want yeah. to do? I'm, I guess maybe you could just start with any changes that any changes you that you've made. Utilities are going up because of what we talked about. Mm -hmm. So we plugged in more money for utilities, um, and we plugged in the six thousand dollars for the for the grants, special grants. And it looks like. We've got some money to play around with, like eighty thousand, eighty-five thousand dollars to. Um, fiscal year twenty seventeen. We're we're in twenty seven eighteen, twenty eighteen. Okay. The Thorn Endowment and Thorn Endowment Special Use, we budgeted 
$212,000 for the Thorn Endowment and $90,000 for Thorn Endowment Special Use. And the actual has been $170,000. So it went from $300,000 and it dropped to $302,000 to $170,000. So it dropped $130,000. So we have actually $130,000 less. Yeah. So there's no playing money. Well, <laughs> what I'm talking about is see how much money we've got proposed. And this is oh, the revenue. For the and this is the revenue. So there's about $85,000. This is revenue coming in. Right. And so we can plug in some more money okay. in our proposed amounts. That's what I meant. But we don't have this. These, this, these numbers in facilities allocation and administrative allocation. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're gonna, yeah. Yeah, we, there's a lot of things that we don't have in here yet. Some but of we need to get those numbers from Alan. Yeah, we need to get those numbers from Alan. And I don't know how he's proposing this 495000 when we were only approved for 381 last year. <laughs> I got those numbers from Scott. Um, that's what Scott sent me. Okay, well, we have to talk to Alan. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know. So we can't really... So this is still a work in process. Oh, okay. definitely. It's totally a work in process. I have a question as long as we're talking about budgets. Uh, I had a citizen ask me, when we voted for the library, we passed a bond. Correct. And haven't we retired that bond? Yes. Yes. So... Last year. Uh, I mean... So just barely. Well, it's 2017, 2017, February. Okay, oh, okay. so a year ago, yeah. just yeah. over a year ago. Yeah. So now that that's passed and the bond's been retired, is are the citizens still going to pay that monthly amount that, in their property tax? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it was not for the building, correct? Right. It, it was, was for, for the, the library. library. It was to fund the library. Okay. Yeah, the, the personnel and donation is dependent on citizen commitment to the library. Right, right, right. So if you take one away, then I had just take both. I had just had yeah. someone ask about that, and I wasn't sure of the answer, but that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So in actuality, we have been paying with the Thorn Endowment the bond. Right, right. And right. And so I understood that before, but I didn't right. know how it. Like I didn't know the legalities of what would happen right. when the bond was paid off. But it wasn't just a bond; right. it was support for the library. Gotcha. Right. Okay, that was my question. Good question. All right. Okay, so really we have to meet with Alan. Yeah. And yeah. we'll get then, some and numbers. We'll, from we'll Alan. send you we'll send you, you an updated copy. You know, when she uh, can she go in before we meet with Alan and let's figure out exactly what that is from the facilities. Well that's something so that, that we, he has to put in. No, it's but not. I mean we can figure from what we have used, what they have used so far. Oh. This year, and then we can drop that figure, figure out. See, mm -hmm. okay, into so we that. and that way okay. we have we can do that. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, we can do that at another time. Okay, okay, so we will send you an updated copy before we give it to Alan. Okay, and then you can see if there's anything that stands out to you that, that maybe we need to think about before we actually turn it over to Alan. I did forget one thing on my report that Winona resigned as past president of the Friends um, last month. So just so you guys know, I think she just wanted to. I I don't think she has a middle ground. Like I think she's either okay. all in or out. So I, I don't think it was any sort of like bad blood there. I think she just wanted to realistically retire. You know from mm -hmm. from that role. So. Just so you know, we don't currently have a past president on our board, so. Okay. Who was the president prior to Winona? I'm just curious. I think it was. Um, Janet Owens. Yeah. Okay. And she doesn't come to very Does many Joe meetings. come to? He does. Um, we we changed the meeting time to accommodate him, and he comes. When he can. When he can. I think his wife's been in Portland. Yes, she has so. been. Okay. Okay, let's turn the time over to Judy for the director's report. All right. At the end of this week on Friday, we're having the, a teen program where the teen
teens are doing a stuffed animal sleepover with kids will bring their stuffed animals. We're going to have a story time and then the, their stuffed animals get to stay overnight at the library and the teens are going to take <laughs> love pictures it. of what their animals do during the sleepover. So <laughs> it's going to be a really fun program. Um, and we are working on our summer reading program. We Right now we're going to have different staff members go out to get sponsors to help sponsor the program and get them to donate gifts and prizes and coupons and so we're just dividing up the areas and assigning out um, different areas for the staff members to go and get different businesses for summer reading. Um, and then we have our Marvel party coming up at the end of the month and I'm really excited for that. It's a really big program for the teens. So, so. I have a question on the Marvel Party. So you've rented out the theater. Yeah. And how many youths do you usually have there? Like how, many, how many people are at the theater? How many do we have? Um, so we, there's a little bit of a snag this year because the Disney kind of changed the rules on us at the end. So we had to get a theater that was larger than we normally do. Normally we get about um, 60 to 80 teens. So my reason. question is, you've already spent the money. The theater is rented. It seems like you should fill it up. Yes. So um, we, in past years, we got approval from the friends to um, make it kind of a county-wide program. Mm -hmm. So we've allocated um, extra tickets to um, other library With teen teen programs, programs as well. So it, with that accounted for, and we're also using it um, for some of our uh, major donors and sponsors um, that are helping with the program. Um, but yeah, we do have probably between 60 and 100 tickets to play with. Okay. Um, and, but yeah, our, our goal is to always try to get every seat filled. Um, it seems like if you've already spent the money to do that. Yeah, and in the past we've, um, we've invited the, the youth center um, Mitch Peterson, he's the uh, instructor yeah. out there for the, the youth center, so we try to always invite them every year um, to come out um, to bring those kids as well. That's um, the youth detention center? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so we um, you know, try to try to get them out as well, to give them something nice um, to do. But, but yeah, so we, we try to do that. Um, we also make it kind of a, a thing for our staff, and anyone on the board is invited to come as well. Um, by the friends as well, so, but yeah, as long as there's tickets, we'd love, did you want to go love with seats that in them. Yeah. No, that was what I was going I, I just wondered if, she did. <laughs> I just wondered if they, I, I think it should just be used up. I wondered I even if they're, if they're really up in spots, maybe they should let North Logan City employees. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, the North Logan really City employees a, should be able to be going. Just a little perk for working yeah. in the city. Yeah, yeah. I'll, have, I'll have a better idea once the Everything everything settles for how many we have to play with. Okay. We're our, the only reason we haven't broadcast to the city as a whole is we want to make sure we don't like give away seats. Right. I mean, you don't want to. Or, we, or there's people that are, aren't be able to be included because there's not enough seats. Right. To how many go tickets around. are there? Uh, there's 400 total, and right now I think we have about 280 for sure that are oh, allocated. That's, that's good. With another probably 40 or 50 most likely allocated. So like cool. I said, we'll probably have about 60 to sixty to 100 seats to play with. To play with. That's good. Okay. okay, that's all I have for the library. Okay. Um, so moving to policy updates. She's got some, our finalized strategic plan that you were sent. By Jenny, did we have any questions or any changes on it? I looked over it. It looked good. I thought she it was really done good. A wonderful yeah. job in writing Thank this up. Yeah, I told her she she's awesome. She's, she's a pro. Really, yeah, she's she's written be. some children's books, 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 too. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, we have them here in the library. So. Okay, so I guess we just need to have a motion to approve this final strategic plan. And then it gets mailed to something. Like that. 
Well, it's part of the packet that we put in with the certification. Okay. Someone want to put a motion in? I move that we approve this. I'll, I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So that finalizes our strategic plan. Now we need to discuss changes to circulation policy to accommodate the fine-free status. Paul made it known to us that it can't just be a little flip a switch and, and you've got fine-free. <laughs> you know, there's a whole lot more to it. Do you want to explain it to them or do you want me to try and explain it um, I, I can kind of go over it basically. So... Um, so yeah, so, so fine free means kind of a couple different things, a couple different systems um, that accommodate it. Um, so basically, uh, the strategy that we've discussed that we think would work best is, um, first and foremost, um, is to create an auto renewal system <laughs> where um, materials will auto renew up to three times. Um, that way it will give patrons the longest amount of time before the item is marked to lost or they're charged for the item because fine free is, you know, you eliminate fines but you still have to pay for damaged materials, right. lost materials, right. things like that. Um, and so with the auto renewal, it kind of gives them that extended period of time. So, um, but if, if it's on hold or you can limit the certain number of items, so um, for example, uh, some of our technology <laughs> items like Kindles and GoPros, those would not auto renew. Uh, also, probably new materials would not auto renew, um, just so that you know someone doesn't take out a new popular book. No one thinks to put it on hold, and they have it for 15 weeks. Basically, um, so we can set those. That is one expense that I found we'll have to do. Our system doesn't currently allow us to do that, but we can pay. A one-time fee for a custom report um, that's seven hundred dollars to get the auto renewals. Um, and so I would recommend that we do that moving forward. And then basically, um, you would then eliminate fines. Uh, there's certain fines on certain um, high-value items or limited um, collection size items, but we would drastically reduce those. So, for example, the um, the Kindles and GoPros; those are five dollars a day fines, which is a little bit hefty, so we would eliminate that down to like one dollar a day. How often do people go over their their limits on the GoPros and Kindles, or they do have the hefty? Um, it, it can happen, I mean, but if someone forgets to bring their Kindle back for a week, or it gets misplaced and they just forget, it's nicer to come back and have a five dollar fine than a thirty dollar fine. Kind of I was just wondering if it really encouraged people to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is, which is another thing as well. And so, and so then basically the way the system would work is after I think we put in, there's a certain different depending, and I, I kind of built a table depending on what the type of item was, what the grace period was. But basically there's, they have the auto renewals for certain items and then they have a three week grace period after that. If it's not returned by then, the item is marked to lost, and they are charged for the full item. Um, they can bring the item back if it's in good working order and everything, then we'll eliminate the charge for the item, but there'll be a $5 processing fee um, added on to that that they'll have to pay. So that is to help cover if we have to buy additional copies of the item. We're also hoping that that will encourage people to, to bring them back. But with the auto renewals, you know, they will have had that item for close to three to four months. So we feel like if you can't get it back in that time, the five dollar fine is um, the five dollar processing fee yeah. is is a reasonable um, thing to ask. Um, let me see if there's any other kind of aspects of it. Yeah, there's like I said, there's a lot of different ways. A lot of Places they'll just you know once it goes to loss they'll mail them out a bill and they have to pay that bill but they keep the item. Um, we didn't think we had the infrastructure to kind of do that and our community is small enough we don't think people would just want bills for items. Um, uh, one thing and this kind of goes back to the budget a little bit we also feel like we need to increase the collections budget so we can buy additional copies of popular new items so that we don't have such a long lag if people are able to keep things 
for an extended okay, so period you're, of time. Okay, so you're increasing the collection fee, so you can have popular items out for longer because we don't want them to pay. Yeah, I was wondering this late too. Fees. I was so doing. Is that, that what we're saying? Yeah, we need to buy more copies of the books. So, so the, the popular books. So, so the, the end result is, if you go to a no fee system, the end result is it needs to be a positive for the library. Correct. So, I understand it's. We already have a program in place for fines, with, mm -hmm. and those get our new collections in in a more timely manner is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So at what point does it become not cost effective to have a no fine system but increase your collections? Isn't that kind of what That's your question what was? I'm yeah. 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 What's that what's that <laughs> Yeah, what so, that and, point? And, a, and a lot of the literature that's kind of written on it is basically that like that increased cost is a benefit because you have so much better interactions with the public. That you're um, not gonna put so up So it's those, not just dollars. Yeah, you're not gonna put up those walls of people either not coming back because they have fines, not you know it, it feels like a punishment almost. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to kind of eliminate that aspect of it and also um, the idea is that you know, if people have fines, they're not going to come back to the library. Um, there's right. a lot. I mean, there's a lot of right, teens yeah. that yeah. won't and check we, things and out. I, and yeah. I work through all that. I just don't know <laughs> if you give, if you increase all of your popular books so people can keep them for 15 weeks. I'm wondering, <laughs> like, could you do some sort of hybrid system like you have with the technology, where you say that there's a no fine system for no fine period. Every, Huh? Of maybe three renewals. What's it now? When does the fines kick in now? So the so the fines kick in, and also the fines after kick in if you weeks. don't. Yeah, after three weeks for books, oh, so that's one week, now. one but week I'm, for DVDs. I'm just wondering if, like, for the brand new stuff that you you know you wait yeah. for a hold, it seems like you do need to have some incentive to bring those back. Yeah. So because I know that even for me, I've sometimes been like, oh, yeah. I'll so pay and, the and five that's cents a day and that's whatever. the way where we could set the new <laughs> the new items um, to. Uh, to not auto renew. Okay. So that they would have them for a week and then that charge for the lost book would automatically start. Or if there's a hold on the item, that automatically starts after. Right. The, so if you have a new DVD that's checked out for a week and it has a hold on it, after that week is done, it automatically starts accruing the, the fines or the item lost in your charge for the item. So and what, how be, long would they have to have it before they're sent a bill for that item? So we wouldn't do the sending a bill. Okay. So we would just have it be where they would bring it back. It also would increase it to the point where they can't check anything out on their card until they bring it back. Um, um, that's fair. Patron account exceeds twenty dollars and finds their account as lost. Yeah, which if you have if you have a few <laughs> lost items with that five dollar processing fee, that's gonna jack up to the twenty pretty quick, and it's gonna lock their account. And they can't do it. But for example, if you have a lost item, whereas now if you have a lost item or if you've racked up twenty dollars in fines, you might bring the item back, but you're not gonna check out the card. Whereas now it's like, okay, I have this twenty dollars, but I can bring it back, and it's only gonna cost me five dollars. And I can check out on my card again. Okay. So that's that's kind of the. the I just don't know what we're going to do when they bring, like, say, we bill them for the book. Hey, it's yours now. You've kept it over this period of time, and now you have to pay for it. But they want to return it. And I and I think I misspoke. So that's that's one of the some of the larger systems, like Salt Lake County, does that where they bill them for the item and they keep it. We would not be doing that. We'd let them bring it back. We would let them bring it back. So there'd be some phrase that said, yeah, it's, or you may return it for a $5 restocking in, fee. Yeah, and it's, in the, it's written into it where it just says, you know, this, is, uh, this item is lost. If you return the item, we'll take that off and charge you the $5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we have the infrastructure. We don't have the ability to keep up on ordering that much and being yeah. able to have that kind of replacement cost. It, that just wouldn't work, so... I think it was confusing, but we wouldn't be sending them bills. It would just be marked on their account. Yeah. Now, we passed last month that we wanted to do a six-month trial period before we made changes to the circulation policy or, you know, made any permanent changes, like you're talking about, paying that $700 yeah. for auto-renew. You know, we didn't want to make any permanent changes until we kind of saw how it worked. Sure. 
And you talked about doing an amnesty week or something like well, that. We do our food for fines in November. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we talked about maybe doing an amnesty. We're just putting it out and like, bring your stuff back. We'll take away yeah. all of your fines. Come check out materials again. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm confused as to, so we talked about this and then we're not able to do it until we get the we new. We can't do it permanently without yeah, so going through a, a lot of process. The new program. So yeah, so Mike. And Mike, the new program, it, it would take a lot. You told me about 60 hour, man hours. Yeah, so, so my, my concern initially was that our systems wouldn't be able to handle it. People could keep items for as long as they want. Um, there's no way to auto renew, so the fines would just immediately start racking up. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it would cause a lot more stress at the desk because the, um, the clerks would just have to be constantly forgiving everything and we didn't feel like there was a mechanism in place to just say, we just won't do fines anymore, there's other items. Okay, so then what's your suggestion, I guess? So I guess my suggestion would be if, if the policy that I, I wrote up um, is, is sufficient and we think that's good, um, to pass that and And to, forget the trial period. Well, we could still do a trial period, and that $700, you know, that may still be, if we find out in a year that the fines isn't working, and we want to go back to that, we could do that. But the auto renew, like, that's still a useful technology, a useful report that we could yeah. have in our system. Yeah. And that's a $700 program upgrade? Yeah, just a $700 one-time like custom idea. report that they would make for us. Um, so we could still do the trial period, but we could get everything set in place. So we could still do the trial period but just do it under this new circulation policy because then that also allows us to you know have a policy in place where we're saying okay you know GoPros aren't ten dollars a fine per day anymore like they're they're at this and we can make those changes in the system and kind of see how this works and I would I would still suggest we do it on a trial period either six months or a year say to let the public know this is still a trial yeah. we're seeing yeah. how it works but behave yeah. yeah, this is not a good thing. Yeah. yeah, but then, yeah. but then, still do the well, maybe do the legwork to it. make sure the we'll the systems are talking <laughs> to each other. We'll get the press in so. on that. But I think it will be hard if we try it out for a while and it doesn't work yeah. to go back to the old way. <laughs> I guess that we need to decide how committed we are. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah, and I know certain libraries have tried it and it didn't go well, and they went back. Okay, so there have been failures. There have been. Um, they're largely much larger libraries, and they rely on fines. You know, they're they're giving up a quarter million dollars a year in fine revenue. Yeah. Um, I just we don't would, like the which idea we would of not fine revenue. How much would we give up? We budget every year for about ten thousand, and it usually comes in under that. Um, well, we did talk about that. We, we came in at quite a lower amount proposed yeah. because of the fine to pay a library. Right. But it's, but it's minimal in terms of our... I think you can go back. I think, I think that's a healthy thing to say. Like, you know, this relies on everyone. It, it is kind of an honor system. Yeah, and like, it's, if you abuse it, it can't, we can't, it's, it's untenable, yeah. you know? And there's mechanisms in place we can see, you know, are we getting items back? What's our circulation looking like? What's our whole situation like? Family. Like, there's ways to see if it's, if it's a success or not. Do you want to make mm -hmm. your instead of a policy yours a procedure so that if, for instance, you decide that the candles are worth two dollars, we as a board don't have to come in and. Yeah, we can. We can. That, I mean, that. that's just a suggestion. I do the pro on policy. Well, hmm. and it seems like a lot of those could be changed on the fly pretty easy yes. too, which could just be like, this isn't working, we propose this, can you vote on it in your next meeting? But most of the most of the policies that I've worked with in putting together the one I did was they, they had it listed out. Um, you know, this is, this type of item has this type of fine, has this type of grace period. Um, yeah. Okay, what I'm thinking though is that we should do an amnesty week or an amnesty month and uh, get as many people in here as we can to forgive their fines in a certain length of time. So here's my question about the amnesty week or month. Will you just forgive all the fines? So the, if they come in. If they, they come in and come in? Yes. 
because I think yeah, they'd have to. We don't. It has to show some system. sort of ep effort. I agree. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't have the ability to just do a blanket. Plus, they're going to be returning the item. Sometimes they still have a fine even after they've returned I, that's the item. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah. about if the item is here, the item has been returned, they just have fines on their account. Yeah. Will you forgive that? For, yeah. You yeah. Have so, to come in yeah. So we would say. No, I would want you, them to come in and say, yeah, there's, hey, I've got some fines. Will you yeah. forgive them? And, and there's no way in our system that we can just pull a report and look up and just do a blanket deletion. They would have to come in. Which is good, awesome good that thing. we can't do that. Yeah. Now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So they would, then, they would come in and if they had, if they still had um, lost items or items that hadn't been returned, we wouldn't right. take those off or, or fines for damaged materials. But if they had any other fines, then we would just delete them. So just all. late fees. And just late fees. Or if they brought the item in good condition, then the, the yeah, they would get those because the fines actually don't even go onto their account until the item hit, is checked in. Oh, really? Because it mm -hmm. keeps accruing until, and then once the item's checked okay, in, so. <coughs> it goes onto their account. So that's something we could do. Yeah. So there's a summer reading. Yeah. Program that's too. what I was thinking. Is you, you wouldn't want to do the amnesty month until yeah. June. Yeah. yeah. When they've got all their school books. Yeah. Back in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then, then my second suggestion would be that we then wait for any permanent decisions to be made so that we can have James in on it. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good idea. idea. So yes. if we just concentrate on doing yeah. an amnesty week or month, however long you want to do it, and then we wait for James do before we make any kind of... Oh, okay. So do you I think May should be yeah. that yeah. month? So we do, do the... Think? Or June. Yeah. June. Right? June. I would do June. June. Because here's how it... In the school system... Everybody is working their tail ends off to get their books in by the end of the school year. Yeah. So they already have searched their house for all the books. <laughs> and if it's in, chances are we'll get some already in May when they're looking for their school books. They'll see that it's a library book. Yeah. And we, you, the school library brings back new yeah. books all the time, and don't they? We get, yeah. We get. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think once May's out of the way, then people... Who, a, the item's already back in, or B, it's, our, it's on their mind. It's fresh. Plus, they want to come to that new reading program. Reading yeah, and program. kids are home. Yeah. And we can promote mm -hmm. this on the radio, too, because we've got radio ad time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yes. So, so people I, know I to bring their books in, and it will forgive their fines. And okay. Mm -hmm. So then as of now, once that Please. month is done, fines are just accrue. And, Regular. And, and accrue during that Jeez that month so like if I get up if I come in on May 1st my fines are all forgiven then I check about a bunch of items and then <laughs> it's a I get time. I get fines on it then can I come back in the middle of May and those fines will be deleted what are you talking about during the amnesty month so during yeah so, so during amnesty, amnesty month, amnesty month is month, June right so, yeah so say I have $50 in fines I haven't used my card in six months because okay. I haven't done it so I come in on May 1st June if, June 1st May 1st isn't May the amnesty month? No, no June. June. Okay, June's the amnesty month. Okay, so I come in on June 1st. You delete that $60 in fines. I check out a bunch of new DVDs. I keep them for three You can weeks. go over all you want in June. In June, whatever I want. <laughs> Pretty much we have so to, So I can come we? in June 30th with like 120 in fines, take them off, and then... Yep. But if I come oh in goodness. July 1st, oh then right. I have to... You're making a point. But <laughs> let's... Do we have patrons who will do that? Well, honestly, it, a lot of it boils down to really busy parents who don't know. Right. A lot, one of the biggest reasons that libraries have gone to find free is because it's punishing, especially um, underserved uh, youth that live in poverty, is basically it. Um, their parents, because their parents are doing it, the parents aren't responsible to get the items back, and the kid's the one that's being punished. Yep, because he can't check out more. And, but, I mean, it's simple. And we have a huge, I mean, parents can check out a hundred items, a hundred books on a card. If you have a family right. of five that comes in here and every kid checks out ten books and you get busy and don't get those books back for a week, that's thirty dollars in fines that you're going to have. I think so, I think you give them a month. I do too. And then after so yes, month, technically, save. if you do that in June, we'll let you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just want to clarify. Yeah. 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 I just, Some I just want to make sure. Right. Okay. Okay. So do we need to make, make this? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. We're Doing something nice if they're upset because we're not nicer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just we wanna, need to make yeah. this an official motion. Yeah. Are you, you going to check with James for his ideas? 
Yeah, before well, we implement something. Before we do anything this permanently. This is just amnesty. Yeah, we're just voting just, on the yes. So, so someone I'll, want to make a I'll motion? I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we implement with the library an amnesty month in June and forgive fines for items that have been returned and if that have accrued. In. If they come in, they have to come yeah. to make that happen as per our discussion. Okay. <laughs> I'll say Thank that. You. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's super exciting. That just makes me happy. Okay. That is. All right, that passes. Okay, we are done with our regular meeting business, and we'll close for an executive session. Thank okay. you. Thank you. It was nice to have you too. Yeah. Tell me your son's name. Theo. Theo, you did great. Good job. I, I had it used to be drugs.